Let's finish this section by talking about the properties of real numbers. The properties we'll see in this lesson we can use to manipulate any algebraic expression. This allows us to simplify expressions, make them easier to work with, and to rewrite equations so that they are easier to solve. The first property we'll talk about is the additive identity property. And this says for any real number a, a plus zero equals a. The number zero is known as the additive identity element of a set of real numbers. We use this property in an example where three plus zero equals three. Now let's look at the multiplicative identity property. And this says for any real number a, a times one equals one times a, which equals a. The number one is the multiplicative identity element of the set of real numbers. Example of this property, negative two times one equals one times negative two, which equals negative two. Now we'll take a look at the inverse properties, starting with the additive inverse property. This says for any real number a, there's a real number negative a, such that a plus negative a equals negative a plus a equals zero, the additive identity element. We say a is the additive inverse of negative a, and negative a is the additive inverse of a. Using this in an example, five plus negative five equals negative five plus five, which equals zero. In this case, five was a, and of course negative five is negative a. Next, we'll look at the multiplicative inverse property, which says for any real number a, where a is not equal to zero, a times one over a equals one over a times a, which equals one. In this case, a cannot equal zero because one over a would be one over zero, which is undefined. Example we'll look at here, pi times one over pi equals one over pi times pi, which equals one. Next, we'll look at the commutative property of addition, which says for any real numbers a and b, a plus b equals b plus a. So basically we can just switch the order of addition and still get the same answer. We see this in an example where we let a equal 3 and b equal negative 2 and 3 plus negative 2 equals negative 2 plus 3 which both equal 1. Now we'll look at the commutative property of multiplication. For any real numbers a and b a times b equals b times a. Again, we just switch the order, the answer is the same. If we let a equal 3 and b equal negative 2, 3 times negative 2 equals negative 2 times 3, both equal negative 6. Now let's look at the associative property of addition. This says for any real numbers a, b, and c, a plus b plus c where b plus c are in parentheses, so we have to add those first by the order of operations, equals a plus b plus c, where we add a and b first. So when we're adding strings of numbers together, it doesn't matter which numbers we add first. In the first case here, we can add the second two together, then add the first. In the second case, we can add the first two together, then add the last and we'll get the same answer either way. In our example, a equal 3, b equal 5, c equal 2. 3 plus 5 plus 2 is 3 plus 7, which is 10. And 3 plus 5 plus 2 is 8 plus 2, which is also 10. Regardless which two numbers we add first, the answer comes out the same. Now let's look at the associative property of multiplication. Here, for any real numbers a, b, and c, a times b times c equals the same thing as a times b times c. So again, for multiplication, whether we multiply the second two first, then multiply the first, or whether we multiply the first two, then multiply the third, we get the same answer. Again, we'll let a equal 3, b equal 5, c equal 2, and 3 times 5 times 2 is 3 times 10, which is 30. 
and that equals 3 times 5 times 2, which is 15 times 2, which also equal 30. Now let's look at the distributive property. This property says for any real numbers a, b, and c, a times b plus c in parentheses equals a times b plus a times c. This is a property we use a lot. In our example, a equals 3, b equals 5, and c equals 2. And 3 times 5 plus 2 is equal to 3 times 5 plus 3 times 2. And in the first case, 3 times 5 plus 2 becomes 3 times 7, which is 21. And in the second case, 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6. So that results in 15 plus 6, which is also 21. This works for any real numbers, A, B, and C. So let's try some. Let's determine the property of real numbers demonstrated by the following equation. 3 times x plus 2 equals 3x plus 6. Which property is demonstrated by this equation? The answer is the distributive property. Let's try another. Which property is illustrated by the equation 3 plus x plus 2 in parentheses equals 3 plus x in parentheses plus 6? And the answer? The associative property of addition. Let's try another one. Which property is illustrated by the equation square root of 3 pi times 1 over the square root of 3 pi equals 1? And this is the multiplicative inverse property. One more. The equation x plus 0 equals x is an illustration of which property? The answer? The additive identity property. Okay, let's look at absolute value and what it means. The mathematical definition of absolute value is for any real number a, the absolute value of a equals a if a is greater than or equal to zero, negative a if a is less than zero. In words, we read this, if a is positive or zero, then the absolute value of a equals a. If a is negative, the absolute value of a equals negative a. For example, if a equals 3, then the absolute value of 3 equals 3, which equals a. If a is negative 5, then negative a equals 5, and the absolute value of negative 5 equals 5, which equals negative a. So this means, for any real number a, the absolute value of a equals the absolute value of negative a. This leads to the interesting observation that the absolute value of a minus b equals the absolute value of b minus a for any two real numbers a and b. This is true because a minus b is equal to negative b minus a. We can also use absolute value to find the distance between any two points on the number line. If a and b are two real numbers, the distance between them on the number line is the absolute value of a minus b, which also equals the absolute value of b minus a. For example, let's find the distance between the numbers negative 3 and 7 on the number line. We see that the absolute value of negative 3 minus 7 equals the absolute value of negative 10, which equals 10. If we reverse the order, we see that the absolute value of 7 minus negative 3 equals the absolute value of 10, which also equals 10. Let's try one of these. Let's find the distance between 8 and negative 8 on the number line. To find the answer, we find the absolute value of 8 minus negative 8, which equals the absolute value of 16, which equals 16. 